Alright, you guys asked for it, so here it is. This is a unedited shitty review of everything on live. I'm in VR right now, and I'm going to review a subset of weapons today, and I've decided I'm going to try my hand at the carbines, since I've been playing a lot of Light Assault recently. So carbines are available on Light Assault and Engineer, as you know. And I'm just going to go from top to bottom on this, and I'm not going to really... I'll try to pause and break and make comments about each weapon, and I'll eventually give a general overview of my opinion of each weapon as well, before we, uh, you know, finish the video. So the first one is the Cougar. The Cougar is the TR's only 167 damage uh, carbine. It does 167 at 10, 125 at 70 meters, fires at 577 RPM, has 520 meters of second velocity, reloads in 2.8 and 2 empty, or 2, uh, with bullets, 2.8 empty, I apologize. Has 35 bullets, so it is got a bit of a magazine advantage. And these are the statistics for the aim accuracy and the hip accuracy, average hip accuracy, fairly good aim accuracy. And it has 2x burst if you care about that at all, which no one does. So attachments, you have all your 1 to 4. You have a compensator on this one. You have a forward grip, laser sight, and dark light ammunition, uh, flashlight. And you have high velocity ammunition, which for the purposes of this weapon, I would recommend. Uh, it does bump up your uh, velocity a little bit at the expense of, you know, your headshot kill range. Your three headshot kill range with 167 damage will go down to 8 meters, meaning that you will do 167 at 8 and then 125 at 90. So that's what that is. And it increases weapon projectile velocity by 5%, which at 520 meters a second, I think, comes out to something like... I think it's... Quick math, quick math. It's some. It's about 550. So it is a bit of an advantage to run this. And as a light assault, you're not going to be within that triple dink headshot ratio a lot of the time since it is a flanking class. So I would generally recommend this attachment. So let's just really quick take a look at it. It's got a good model. I like it. It's modeled after the new TMG style, and it kind of looks like a saber, so let's do some target shooting. Also, if you don't know, this is just a side note. I'm in VR right now, and I am at this little point right here on the map. This is a great little area to do exercises. You have multiple firing positions. You have this tiny little hill to practice on these targets. You have that hill, and you have that hill. And even, you know, it's, it's a great way to do this. And if you want some extreme, you know, turning control training right here, where you have to turn almost 120 degrees. Very good practice area I've found. I've come here many times, so I'm just going to stand on the tiny little hill right here and shoot. So as you can see here, I'm not getting three headshots. I'm getting four headshots. However, it will do four headshots at all ranges since its minimum damage is 125. <clears throat> in combat, and in actual practice, this weapon performs pretty well. It's comparable to the Pulsar C, but the Pulsar has, I think, slightly better recoil at the expense of only 30 bullets. But for most purposes, if you're bursting this weapon, it does a fairly good job. It got a buff several months ago in which it got raised from 550 RPM to 577 RPM, and I think that really helped the weapon a lot. 550-167 was not really something the TR needed, considering that 577-167 is comparable to a 652-143 damage profile. So you were basically just getting a inferior ranged carbine at the expense of basically just saying, oh, we now have a 167 damage carbine. So that bump to rate of fire definitely made the weapon more competitive, and I think it really helped make the weapon more defined. Moving on to the links, this is my personal favorite, and I've got almost 4,000, yeah, I've got 4,000 kills. I finally broke that. Low accuracy, because I like to spam with this. So, if you don't know, 909-125 is similar, is uh, comparable to 800-143, and uh, which means that you know, your similar 843 weapons are the TAR. Obviously, you'll have a faster headshot kill with the Lynx, but the uh, the TAR is 800, 143, where is it? It's right here. Uh, so your, your body shot time to kill will be similar to this type of weapon. This is an extremely fast firing carbine at 909, but it's very controllable and it's very predictable. Maybe not controllable. It does have quite a bit of kick, but it is manageable with recoil. 
And don't let this 125 damage fool you. This thing can reach out quite far and be still effective. Uh, if you learn to master the recoil pattern and you learn to master the cone of fire so that you burst through the cone of fire to control it, it can be very effective. 450 meters a second, that's on the low side, and it's going to get even lower when you equip soft point, which is mandatory on this weapon since it extends the four headshot kill range out to 15 meters, meaning you'll be doing 125, which is four headshots at 15. After that, you'll be doing five. This is a very important attachment. Either way, uh, if you're like... If you're on edge about running this, which I wouldn't be, there's little to no downside to this. Your projectile velocity going down by 5% isn't really going to hurt you a whole lot at 450 meters a second, and for the type of weapon it is, it is a very close range carbine, and as such does not require high velocity as much as other long range carbines might have, might need. <clears throat> Reload speed is extremely fast at 2.3 with bullets 3.1 uh, uh, empty. That is much lower than the GD7F and the Serpent. The Serpent and the GD7F reload in 3 and 4 seconds each, I think. But it is definitely noticeably slower. If you can have bullets in the magazine, which very isn't very hard in my opinion, uh, you will definitely be keeping up the pace faster than those weapons will. 400, uh, 40 round clip. Very nice. Very nice 40 round clip. Makes this weapon more spammable. Uh, decent hip fire accuracy, which can be improved with the advanced laser. And, uh, okay, slightly worse aim accuracy, I believe. The numbers, you can take a look at the numbers yourself and compare them, but it has a .045 bloom compared to the .05 bloom of 143 weapons, which is nice on this weapon. It helps. Where you're going to want to run, you're, you have your choice from 1 to 4x, but you're probably going to want to want to run a 1x on this. Uh, this is a very close-range weapon, and as such, your optic choice should be low power. Uh, barrel flash suppressor is optional, um, but do not run a suppressor on this weapon. Suppressors are usually just straight downgrades. Um, the flash suppressor is optional if you feel like you're getting spotted due to muzzle flash a lot, but in my opinion, I find that as light assault, I don't want to be showing up on the minimap further away than I already am, especially in small fights, so I tend to take it off. And at that point, if they can hear you, which they will with this thing, what's what's the difference from them actually seeing you? Because they will check their minimap, and they will see you. So, it's really optional and up to you at that point. I ran it for a time, but now I don't anymore. I've gone through phases where I run it and don't. It's up to you. You have an advanced laser sight and a flat dark light flashlight, as always. But I would actually recommend running the foregrip, in my opinion. Uh, I enjoy the foregrip. The foregrip makes this uh, makes its ADS side-to-side uh, -side recoil much better and much more controllable to the point that you can really just pull down. Um, there is not a whole lot of horizontal recoil when you use a forward grip. And the laser sight, the hip fire is already pretty good. And at the ranges you're going to be getting in close with this weapon with, uh, I don't think it really increases it meritably. It helps increase your hip fire accuracy at distance, but me personally, I've never been a fan of hip firing at middle distance. Uh, so I usually stick with the forward grip. It's up to you though, if you find the laser sight to be better and you're a hip fire hero, go right ahead. ALS is very strong. As you can see, here's the cone of fire without it. Here is the cone of fire with laser. It gets tighter and it blooms, uh, start from bloom. It takes longer to bloom. So, and soft point ammunition. Let's just take the forward grip out because this is my favorite, honestly. And let's go over to this range. Visual on hostile ladder. You're not going to be getting many kills with it at range. However, it does have a very uh, controllable recoil pattern, which means that you can spam bullets and get kills at long range, if you don't mind constantly reloading. In my opinion, this is one of the most versatile carbines the TR has from short to middle distance, and it really shines. That was horrible shooting. Sorry about that. Now obviously everything looks good in VR, but I would recommend this gun as it does. I would definitely recommend adding it to your arsenal as it is the highest DPS carbine the TR has. It's a very good choice for short range and middle range too. Moving on to the Jaguar. The Jaguar is 750-143, a standard uh, damage profile type. 440 meters a second, which is interesting because it's lower by 10 meters a second than the Lynx. And reloads slightly longer. 2.75 and 3.89. That's very punishing on the long reload. 40 bullets, however, that's got a lot of damage at 40 bullets with 143 damage. Good hip fire accuracy and good aim accuracy. 
I'd recommend soft point on this as it does extend the headshot kill range out a little bit. Even though it does start at 143, you're not going to hit 125 for a little while. It's good to usually run soft point ammunition on these kinds of weapons since it does drop two damage tiers. If it only dropped to 125, I would not recommend it, obviously, because it's a four headshot kill at all ranges at that point. And why would you want to extend the body shot distance anyway? Uh, the MSWR used to have that problem, and it was why would you run soft point ever? And then they finally nerfed its damage range damage tiers and soft point became viable definitely run a one x on this it's uh recoil is pretty massive in my opinion definitely run a laser sight on this because oh yes look at that hip fire look at that hip fire controllable ish recoil you can run a this is the 0.75 carbine i forgot to mention this does have 0.75 you can straight around people's heads this is the only 0.75 that the tr has aside from the ns ones and um and as such it makes it kind of good some people might want to run a forward grip to take full advantage of that 0.75 but i find that it's recoil at the ranges you'll be engaging it is already controllable enough you you can run the laser with little to no penalty to recoil honestly you're not really missing out on much of the forward grip at that point I'd recommend it, but with the revamped links, I would definitely get the revamped links first. The revamped links being, you know, almost a year, two years old now. But <laughs> I, uh, I would definitely recommend getting the links first because everything the Jaguar does, except for the .75, the links seems to do in combat better, in my opinion. It might, you might have different results. You might like the extra bullet damage. You might like the extra body shot if you're not a headshot hero. Uh, then maybe the Jaguar is for you with that body shot potential is slightly better at 143 damage. You know, get those single body shots on target. It's all up to you. But I would definitely recommend taking a look at the links first. I'm not sure what the price point of these weapons is anymore since it changed several times and I had everything unlocked. But I do believe they're both a thousand. If not, uh, still, I would recommend grinding for the links first. You will not regret it. Moving on to the NS weapons. I'll cover the NS-11C really quick. The NS-11C fires 652, 143 at 10, 530 meters a second, which is a bit on the high side, and uh, 2.3 and 1.85 seconds. This is a very fast reload time. And 35 bullets at 143, you're not hurting a whole lot on damage compared to uh, uh, some carbines, some of the close-range carbines. You are hurting compared as TR, though, since it is five less bullets at 143, but... That's not really a big penalty for what you're gaining, which is an incredibly versatile, stable platform. My personal favorite build is, this is wrong, it's changed since then. I ran the Platinum version, not the default version, is 2X optics, no barrel attachment for better hip fire, and laser sight, along with high velocity ammunition. I recommend high velocity ammunition to bump up the velocity on this weapon a little bit higher. Uh, soft point isn't as necessary on this weapon, since you're going to be, this is a real flanker's weapon. This is a more stable shooting platform, you know, more accurate carbine weapon. So I'd recommend high velocity. You can also run foregrip and comp uh, to get that super hip, uh, super ADS. It's very controllable, as you can see. I'm not really compensating a whole lot here. It's very, very controllable. In fact, here, I'm not going to compensate at all. It's very straight up and slight pull to the left. And when you take this off, it's it's not really that much worse. I have to burst a little more, but I am gaining dank hip fire, which can hip fire targets out to pretty good distance and is stable while doing it. This is one of the few weapons where I actually enjoy a laser sight on it and like to hip fire out to good distance because this weapon's capable of it with its very tight and slow rate of fire means that you don't bloom a whole lot. Uh, tight cone of fire and slow rate of fire. Uh, good hip accuracy and good aim accuracy. Without any attachments, let me just show you. It's pretty good all around even without attachments. Um, and they o it only gets better when you choose attachments with this weapon. So I definitely would recommend this weapon. Uh, you'll n I'll compare it to the... Uh, whatchamacallit here in a second. The T5 AMC. We're getting there, though. The Tanto. The Tanto's interesting. It has zero cone of fire, and then it blooms massively. It has massive bloom values, but zero cone of fire starting values. Very accurate, but it's a quirky carbine. Um, the damage profile, I should probably show you, is very low. It's 600, 143. That is extremely low. But it does reload quickly, and um, 
has good muzzle velocity. So this is more of a, a shooter's, like a, a, a sharpshooter's carbine, honestly. I'd recommend a flash suppressor on this because the DPS is so low, you want every concealment opportunity available to you. I'd recommend a foregrip so that the horizontal recoil can get even better, and I'd recommend running high-velocity ammunition to bump up your range a little bit more. And then either a 1x or a 2x, I bought the 3.4 as a meme. Don't, don't, don't put a 3.4 on this unless you really are crazy. Um... This weapon almost requires the users to get headshots in order to control it, but it does have extremely stable shooting. There's very little cone of fire bloom, and unless you like really hold down the trigger, like, hang on. That's not going to be a good example. Let's shoot against it. As you can see, it doesn't go crazy until the last little half of the magazine, but... Uh, and if you can control it, it has little to no re uh, horizontal recoil. It's really just vertical. It does have a bit of a kick on the whole, uh, vertical recoil, as you can see. It is kicking very massively. That was up about 20 degrees. So my verdict on this is wait. Don't buy this very immediately. Um, let me reset the Sunday. Get back in. Don't w uh, wait to get this SMG uh, carbine. Don't get it immediately. There are better purchases to be made. The only reason you'd want to get this is because you want that samurai helmet, which is a joke. <laughs> now you have the T5 AMC, the TR's version of the NS11C, which is 652, 143 as well, but has a whopping 570 meters a second velocity, but no 0.75. NS11 has 0.75. This does not have 0.75. Reloads very quickly, 2.2 uh, short, 3.1 long, 40 rounds at 143. A lot of damage potential here. This is a even. This is like if you like aiming with the NS11C, you will like aiming with the T5. You might have to get used to not having 0.75, but you will like it. And oh my God, this velocity! It is basically sniper rifle level. You have to be careful though, because this weapon doesn't have a whole lot of DPS, and if you're caught with your pants down doing a long reload, you might be screwed. So be careful with your positioning. Definitely run an advanced forward grip. It has access to that. And definitely run the compensator. And then run your choice of optic on um, 1 or 2x, I'd recommend, since carbines tend to need low power optics. I don't see how you could run a 3.4, but if you have found success with a 3.4 in the past, go right ahead. The only time I've ever found success with a 3.4 optic is when I'm using a scout rifle, the SOAS. It sounds crazy, but it works. High velocity ammunition, I'd strongly recommend because that sends its velocity up to close to 600 meters. I think it was 615. But, um,. It's definitely sniper rifle level, very fast, very pinpoint accurate. Definitely recommend putting high velocity on it. It is an upgrade in my opinion in this case. Obviously it has downsides, but two meters shorter of 143 damage is not the end of the planet. In fact, it's barely even noticed at all. Now, uh, my verdict, by the way, is uh, you might like this. Uh, try it. If you like aiming uh, carbines, I'd recommend this and the Cougar and the NS11C. But if you don't, definitely don't get it because there are faster damage per second carbines and if you like that, you know, run and gun spray and play, uh, play style, definitely get that. Track 5 is your stock standard uh, carbine. You can put whatever you want on here. There's no ammo attachment, there's your standard uh, rail attachments, your standard two barrel attachments and a 1X. You can put whatever you want on here and it'll work. 40 rounds, 750, 143, I think decent velocity. Uh, yeah, 490. It's a little on the higher side. It's higher than the uh, than the uh, short range SM uh, carbines. 2.5 short, 3.7 long. There's a big discrepancy here between short and long. I definitely recommend trying to get the short reloads. Decent hip fire, decent aim. This thing is a jack of all trades. Think of the T1 Cycler made compact. It is a compact rifle basically, with basically more fall off and slightly worse recoil. Stay alert, and, Enemy have yeah, been I mean it's. It is what it is. I'd recommend it if you're a new player to just play around with it. It's a good way to determine this weapon's good, and it's a good way to determine if you actually will like the play style of light assault. Now you can put a uh, forward grip on to uh, increase your aiming potential, or you can put a laser sight on. Here's your uh, forward grip. As you can see, the horizontal recoil goes noticeably down, and here's your laser sight. As you can see, pretty tight. Uh, hip fire. It's either or really. There's no wrong choice with this gun. I would just, again, steer clear of the suppressor. 
Flash suppressor is optional, but again, we covered that earlier. I've yet to erax this weapon, actually, but I have used it in the past, and it is very useful. Now, if you're like me, and you're a very stupid new player, you might have made a horrible choice in Arax the Track 5S. So we're going to cover the two variants of the Track 5 really quick. The Track 5 Burst, which is, I was joke, uh, not joking around, I was uh, testing around with it in here in VR temporarily. Again, Flash Suppressor is optional. But I think this chain. No, this is correct. Okay, the Track 5 Burst actually has access to high velocity ammunition, which I would recommend if you're using uh, this weapon because the velocity goes up to 515, and then with high v HVA, it goes up even further. Same reload speed characteristics. You gain two extra bullets in the magazine, so you don't uh, have one bullet on your last trigger pull with the Burst weapon. 750 at 143. These weapons, all the burst weapons got buffed several patches ago to be extremely accurate. I would recommend giving it a shot if you like aim carbines because this thing is nuts. This thing is absolutely insane. Obviously you're going to want the foregrip. I don't know why you'd want the uh, laser sight on this one if you're choosing it because this, this is the aiming carbine on all factions. On all factions, if you want a solid aiming carbine for cheap, get the burst carbine because especially if you're a local VR player and you kind of like this play style, Enemy hot damn, it is just nuts. It is very tight cone of fire. The damage profile may not be the best, especially on VS 698 143. I pray for your souls. I am sorry. Uh, it Aside from the damage profile being less than ideal for a burster, this thing's extremely tight accurate and you will not regret using it if you're an aim type player. Do not use, do not use this, do not fucking use this ever. But if you do end up using it, this is the Track 5S, which has access to a grenade launcher. It's all the same stats as the Track 5, except it has worse RPM. It's got 698 RPM because it has the grenade launcher, which uh, will uh, one-shot enemies and such. And, oh, you can't ADS with this anymore. It'll one-shot players, and it'll also do some pretty, uh... It'll do some alright splash damage. It's okay. There's no reason to run a grenade launcher, in my opinion, because... The limited, you know, utility of it. You only get three grenades, and it's hard to arc this. Although it is nice and useful for splash damage, and you can get some good hackusations with it when you run around with a UB shotgun, but... Aside from this, there's no real reason to run a grenade launcher in Planet Side, in my opinion. So this, it renders this weapon obsolete. If this was available on something, you know, useful, like, you know, God forbid, uh, a Jaguar or like a Lynx or Track Five Normal, why is it only on the S? Uh, then maybe it does have access to a compensator. It does has HVA and soft point. Set it up how you like it. It's the most versatile, but it's also the worst carbine of any faction. The S variants. Uh, don't use it, guys. Don't use it, please. And the Araxium version is also the last one. Uh, it only has access to optics because the attachments are pre-chosen. The hip fire accuracy is slightly different from the base Track 5 because it has a built-in laser sight, even if it does not show it, and it has a built-in grenade launcher. And aside from that, it's basically a Track 5 that's shiny. And it also has a UB shotgun, which is nice for hacking day hackitations. And uh, it also has that bug where it'll reload the grenade into the clip, which is, yeah, yeah, this bug's back. <laughs> Allow me to do that. But yeah, aside from that, there's nothing really different about this weapon compared to the Track 5. Is it worth your time to get it? Maybe. I didn't really enjoy having to do the Track 5S because I was an idiot and only had like 300 kills left on it, so I powered through it. But yeah, you got some solid choices to do this with. You, I, My solid choices to finish this directive would be the Lynx, the Jaguar, the NS-11C because that's a very stable shooting platform, the Track 5, and then I'd say the Cougar. If I could do it all over again, I'd choose the Cougar instead of the... Uh, the Track 5S, because the Cougar was not as competitive when I was doing this directive, and now it is. So that'll wrap it up for TR Carbines. I'll see what I want to do next, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Take it easy. Hope this was helpful.